Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. It looks like Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise is moving into the end game, and I, for one, am very excited, as everybody's going to be getting some brand new upgrades. Not only is Kuwadorn going to fly again, but Kazumi has a brand new Gunpla, the Gundam Aegis Knight. That's right, my friends. So, I'm going to go ahead and say that this review is going to be very short. I'm very low on time, but I wanted to give my quick thoughts and score for this episode rather than not give you guys a review at all and make you wait for a week just to hear my thoughts. That being said, this was a simple episode. Hiroto has officially gotten over his past, and he's almost a completely different character. Now he's a lot more happy-go-lucky. He's recaptured his love of Gundam, and he's bringing that to the world of Eldora and all of his friends so that they can stop Alice and save Masaki. So, lots of stuff to talk about. So, first and foremost, we get to learn that Kuwadorn, the sacred beast, is actually going to get an upgrade. Parvis suggests that they actually use gunpla parts to rebuild his wings, which are going to allow him to fly again. And I think this is pretty awesome, and it leads to a great scene where both Parvis and Hiroto actually go back to Eldora, and instead of being in their regular forms, they actually come in as Haros, wearing these like weird sort of mecha mechanical suits, which allow them to create these gunpla pieces, which they're going to fit onto Kuwadorn's broken wings, which already make him look ten times cooler than he already already was. It's funny too because they actually have a scene where they all take a break and take a snack break and there's something weird about watching a Haro eat something. I don't know, it's just wrong. Essentially, this entire scene and everything else associated with it essentially just building up to the big final confrontation that they're going to be having with Alice, as well as potentially trying to save the character of Masaki, because Moran appears in this episode and pretty much makes it clear that he's been fighting back against the One-Eyes, and this seems like the perfect opportunity to not only bring him back to his senses, but to also gain a very strong ally in what is going to be this really big, giant final battle. But probably the biggest part of the episode is we have this fantastic scene between Hiroto and Hinata, now, throughout most of the series, he's been very standoffish with her, but now that he's sort of gotten over all of the negative things that have happened to him, he's ready to talk to her. And that's apparently because when he learns from her that Masaki's sister, Mizuki, is connecting with her, and he understands that now she has to know exactly what's going on. He pretty much informs her of everything that's going on within this world, and how he and his friends are the only ones who are actually going to be able to save her. Of course, Hinata, being the one that she is, understands the importance of all of this, and allows Hiroto to go off and endanger his life. I wish there was a little bit more to the character of Hinata outside of just being the super cute supportive female character of the show, but in that sense, she is fulfilling her role. I was kind of hoping she would do something a little more active in the GBN, and she still potentially could in the big final battle of the series, but it's sort of just up in the air. But when we finally do return to the planet of Eldora, we get to see that Kazumi finally has his brand new gunpla, the Gundam Aegis Knight, which is basically a slightly upgraded version of his original gunpla. It's got a shield, it's got a giant spear, and it's got Kazumi written all over it. And I have to admit, it looks really cool, and let's face it, the main reason it was created was to sell some brand new model kits. Speaking of which, it looks like uh, Hiroto is also going to have some brand new upgrades for his Gundam as well, which we can already see previews for in the preview for the next episode of the series, as it looks like they're almost immediately going to jump into all of the big action that's going on, taking on Masaki personally, and hopefully saving him and bringing him out of this deathly coma. So yeah, basically, we are building up to the big finale finale of the series, and uh, I can't believe it's happening so fast. So, what's the rundown on this episode of Gun and Bill Divers Rerise? A simple but effective episode, which hit all of its emotional marks, as well as bringing back all the classic characters, and making it feel a little bit more like the classic first couple episodes of the series. Getting back to Eldora, meeting Kawadorn, getting really cool upgrades, still having callbacks to the classic Gundam series. Hell, I loved the moments when they're actually texting each other, and Parvis sends Hiroto an animated gif of Amuro Ray from the original Gundam. That's always been one of my favorite things about this series is that it's very aware of the fact that it's set within a world where Gundam exists already as an anime franchise, and they always manage to have fun with that, while at the same time this is a show that completely has its very own flavor and distinctiveness. I've said so many times that I do not like the first season of Gundam Build Divers, but Re-Rise has really sold me on its concept, and it's not my favorite Gundam not by a long shot, but it's still entertaining in just about every way, and it's the type of Gundam that I'll never remember 
because it's that crazy one with aliens, a giant robotic dragon beast, killer AI, and all types of crazy stuff going on. It's the most sci-fi filled Gun Gundam that I believe has ever existed. And in that sense, it's distinctive if anything, and it's entertaining, which is why I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of five. That's my thoughts on the episode. Yours may differ. Why don't you sound off in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about the latest episode of Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. What are you hoping to see from the big epic finale of the series? From the character moments to the brand new Gunpla to Masaki, the big battles going on with him. Do you think they're actually going to be able to take down Alice and save the planet of Eldora? Is this just the beginning of an even bigger story? Will everything be self-contained within this season? Let's just talk about all of it in the comment section below. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more just like this one. Jump into the cockpit and take your gun plod directly to the like button. Helps out these videos tremendously. I would also like to thank all of my patrons who've been checking out my Patreon page. You guys have been making some amazing donations and I cannot thank you enough. I also appreciate all of the feedback on my videos. And remember, if you make a donation through my Patreon, I will review an anime series of your choice. I would also love to add your name to this list of amazing people who are continuing to support this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay dandy, baby.